look at the variation of inotropic temperature, then there is a general um, equation, which is, there is an equation which is, which will give you a rough idea about how does it vary, because sometimes it is said that uh, the current uh, is 1.5 times or 1.9 times like that, but there is a general equation which will tell you that how does it vary. So if you have a I naught, if you want to find the I naught, the reverse saturation current at a particular temperature T. Okay. What you want to do? You want to find the reverse saturation current at a particular temperature T when you already know the reverse saturation current at a particular temperature T1. Okay. Then it is simple that you have to multiply it by twice of T minus T1 and upon 10. Okay. Yeah. So if your temperature is suppose that uh, you know the reverse saturation current at a temperature T1, that is, you know, suppose T1 is 30 degrees centigrade and you want to find the I naught at a temperature T which is actually 60 degrees centigrade. Okay. So it is like this then you substitute for here here then Suppose you say that I naught T1, that is the reverse saturation current at temperature T1 is suppose 10 microamperes, 10 microampere, which is written like this, 10 raised to 10 raised to minus 6 ampere. If the temperature, if the current at temperature T1, that is 30 degrees centigrade is 10 microampere, then you want to find out the I naught or the reverse saturation current at a new temperature, which is 60 degrees centigrade. Okay. So you substitute it into the this equation that I had just provided. So it will be like this, I naught at a temperature of 60 degrees centigrade is equal to I naught at a temperature T1, it was 10 microamperes into two raised to T, so T is 60, T1 is uh, 30 upon 10. So this will give you, if you solve for it, it will be uh, 30 divided by 10, so it will, the, it will be 10 times 2 raised to 3. Okay. So your current is in micro, so the, when you multiply it, it will be 80 microamperes. Okay. It will be 80 microamperes. So what does it say is that if you if you write it in the form of a statement, uh, uh, and why is it important? Why you want this thing? Why you want this? Why you want to find this I naught? Because when you look at the diode current equation, it is I equal to I naught. it is I equal to I naught E raised to V upon eta VT minus one. So you can see that I have not written the subscript D here because uh, when we talk about a diode current equation, then it means that this I is actually diode current and this V is actually the voltage across the diode. So we can remove that subscript capital D which, which indicates the uh, diode current or the diode voltage. So this is I equal to I naught used to V upon eta VT minus one. So you must remember that this is valid for a particular temperature, for a particular temperature. Okay, it is a temperature dependent because overall the currents in a semiconductor are temperature dependent. So what is missing here is that you must remember that this I naught is temperature dependent. It's I naught T. 
okay so sometimes we have a problem like uh, i not <clears throat> i not is given at a particular temperature okay and you want to find the current in a diode suppose i say that the forward voltage v the voltage across diode is 0.6 volts okay the temperature is 300 degree kelvin okay so whatever information is given to you that suppose i not at 300 degree kelvin is again suppose 10 micro amperes <clears throat> then when you substitute for all these quantities into this equation you will get the diode current okay diode current at 300 degree kelvin but with this given data with this given data if suppose suppose the question is that you know the i not at 300 degree kelvin which is 10 micro amperes but you are asked to find the i at some other temperature that is 400 degree kelvin then the information given here regarding the i not at 300 degree kelvin is not sufficient we cannot substitute this i not into this equation to get the current at 400 degree kelvin in that case what you will do you will first of all find the i not at 400 degree kelvin okay you first find the find the i not at 400 degree kelvin that is will be your first task before solving this uh problem so given voltages are same v is the voltage across the diode is kept constant it is 0.6 volts but the temperature has changed from 300 to 400 degree kelvin so in that case this i not is not going to be valid the i not at 300 degree kelvin is not going to be valid because it will give you a wrong answer because if i not is changing with temperature then obviously your i the diode current is also going to change so first thing that you will be doing is is you will first find i not at 400 degree kelvin by substituting for i not at 300 degree kelvin and then doing the same thing 2 raised to t minus so it is t is 400 degree kelvin minus 300 upon 10 so when you do this thing you are writing or representing i not at 400 degree kelvin in terms of i not at 300 degree kelvin So it is just multiplied with a certain factor, okay? So that will give you the updated reverse saturation current for the diode, and then you substitute it into your diode current equation to obtain your actual diode current. Okay, so you got it. Uh, what is the importance of this uh, equation? Uh, sir, can you explain uh, this once again? Sir, actually, there is a little bit confusion. Uh, which part do you want to see? Uh, sir, last part in which you have told the equation I equals to I not. Yeah, I, I will again come back to this equation. What I am saying is that the current in a diode is. Please turn off your mic. The current in a diode is temperature dependent. Okay, that everybody knows that it is temperature dependent. But whenever we look at a diode current equation okay when we look at a diode current equation we need to understand that this is this equation is valid for a particular temperature so whatever i not is given to you so you must first ask that what is the temperature in every question it will be mentioned that what is the temperature the ambient temperature okay at which i not is given so if the in the question it is mentioned that uh, at a 300 degree kelvin the reverse saturation current is 10 microamperes it means it is talking about the reverse saturation current at a specific temperature of 300 degree kelvin okay then you are given you are provided the voltage across the diode which is 0.6 volts okay 
from this information and also you will be also told that whether it's a silicon diode or whether it's a germanium diode okay so with this all this information you can easily find out the diode current okay but sometimes what happens is that in a question the, you are given the reverse saturation current at a temperature at a particular temperature suppose 300 degree kelvin but you are supposed to find the diode current not at 300 degree kelvin but at 400 degree kelvin okay so then what you have to do is if you directly substitute the same thing if you directly substitute the i not at 300 degree kelvin into this equation then you will you will get the same answer or oh, no there will be a variation because obviously i will i will assume that you are going to change vt also because vt is also a temperature dependent term t upon 11600 but many times what we do is we are aware that okay temperature has changed to 400 degree kelvin so students change the value of vt and here uh, they don't forget to change the value of vt but what they forget to do is that they are they forget to update the reverse saturation current at 400 degree kelvin so what i mean to say that if you if a reverse saturation current is given to you at a particular temperature and you are asked to find the diode current at another temperature and first of all you have to update the value of the reverse saturation current huh? Uh, and by, oh, and how will you update you will be updating it through the through this equation and this is the example that i had provided that how you will update it okay so in this particular example what is happening is that the i not at 300 degree kelvin is given to you which is 10 microamperes and you were asked to find out the diode current at 400 degree kelvin okay so to find the diode current at 400 degree kelvin you need to first of all find the reverse saturation current at 400 degree kelvin and how will you do that you will use the value of the given i not at 300 degree kelvin substitute for the new temperature and the old temperature okay so this is how you will find the new reverse saturation current and with this updated value of reverse saturation current you will substitute it in this diode current equation and you will get your diode current at a particular temperature okay <coughs> so for voltage or uh, equivalent of temperature vt we have to write t value as 400 yeah obviously because whatever temperature change, there are two temperature dependent terms in this diode current equation okay there are two temperature dependent terms one is this vt and another one is i not because v is constant it is 0.6 volts unless and until it is specified in the question that the v has also changed okay so it will be it's not temperature dependent because it's an externally applied voltage so the only temperature dependent terms are this i not and vt okay sir okay so this thing has to be kept in mind okay so coming so, back to this this is how the diode current will vary with temperature and it is obvious that the current is going to increase with the increase in temperature uh, then you saw that uh, for the various uh, materials there is a cut in voltage uh, cut in voltage is the minimum voltage uh, beyond which the current in a diode increases significantly so that is how it is defined cut in voltage is the minimum voltage at which the current in a diode increases significantly that's how all uh, most of the books define but if you want to quantify it then it is sometimes defined as cut in voltage is the voltage at which the diode current reaches 10% of its maximum value 10% of its maximum value so every diode has a maximum rated current every diode has a maximum rated current okay suppose it's suppose i it's 1 ampere suppose you cannot allow more than 1 ampere through a diode then if it reaches 10% of its maximum value then it is considered as a cut in voltage so if you want to quantify that definition otherwise 
usually uh, normally what people define is that cut in voltage is the voltage beyond which the current in a diode increases significantly that is how they define it then but mobility if you define it in a general way then it means that it gives you an indication that how easily you can move okay how easily one can move that is mobility so if you are having higher mobility it means uh, you are you can move easily if you are having a lower mobility it means it's difficult for you to move from one one place to another place similarly if you say that uh, if you look at the mobility then the look at the table that is given here then it is a mobility with a subscript written n okay mu n yeah it's a mu n and uh, for germanium the mobility is mu n is 3900 so when this n subscript is actually your mobility of electrons so if you talk about mobility of holes then it will be written as mu p mu p so in this table you are having information regarding the mobility of uh, electrons it is uh, for germanium it is 3900 for silicon it is 1500 and for gallium arsenide it is 8500 it indicates this mobility definition in this mobility value indicates that how easily an electron can travel within a semiconductor so for germanium the mobility is high mobility of electrons is high it is it means the electrons in a germanium can travel much more easily as compared to the electrons in a silicon diode the mobility of holes is always less than the mobility of electrons so if you have yeah, you can refer any book that if you want to find out the mobility of the holes then uh, there will be a table provided in each of the books that mobility of electrons as well as mobility of holes the mobility of holes is less than the mobility of electrons then comes an important thing that till now whatever you have seen it is about a exactly representing okay if not exactly then at least we are very much near the actual behavior of the diode so you what you do is as i said in the i told you in the last class also that you in the lab you make a table okay uh, a voltmeter is connected across parallel to the diode Uh, ammeter is connected in series with the uh, diode okay and then you make a table and you then note down the voltage versus the current values and then you plot do, those dots in your graph paper and then you connect each of them okay and then that gives you the characteristic of the diode it gives you the characteristic of the diode and if you look at the uh, equation diode current equation that is also closely matching with the practical characteristic that you are getting or that you may get when you perform this experiment okay so there is a kind of exponential behavior of exponential nature in the forward bias and in the reverse bias the current is initially increasing then it becomes saturated then it gets saturated okay so those are exact equations so whenever i say that the diode current so id equation then id equal to i not e raised to v upon eta vt minus 1 so that is a exact equation okay which is going to represent the characteristic of the diode uh very close to that of the practical characteristic but when we perform our analysis in most of the uh, cases whether it's a, a practical circuit like that of a rectifier okay that we'll be seeing later on okay uh, or any other circuit like a clipper or a clamper now in those circuits what we do is we don't uh, consider the uh, diode in exactly 
the same way that is that the, the exactly the same way that is that we have plotted but we try to model it we try to model it okay and that's why the question comes that uh, how do you model a diode so in this slide as you can see there is an the heading is ideal versus a practical diode ideal versus a practical diode so ideally a diode would be if we if we ignore the initial cut in voltage if we ignore the initial cut in voltage and ideally you say that the diode is working as a switch when you are above the cut in voltage the current will flow when you are below the cut in voltage there is no current so until you apply a cut in voltage the diode is until you reach the cut in voltage okay the diode is off otherwise beyond the cut in voltage the diode is on so in this analysis uh, this way of analysis is uh, many times simplifies our many complex circuits okay because every time if we consider the exact current equation then uh, you say that okay the diode is conducting uh, at 0.65 also at 0.64 also even at 0.2 uh, volts it is having certain current so what can we do with that so you will say that okay so 0.3 at 0.3 volt we are having certain current at 0.35 also we are having some current obviously there is certain current but until you reach the cut in voltage the diode is not considered to be on okay because only beyond the cut in voltage you are going to use a practical diode okay only beyond the cut in voltage you are going to use a practical diode in the forward bias region also so there is no application of a of a diode in the forward bias region below the cut in voltage you might get some current but that is not enough current to make any practical application so any time you are going to use a diode in the forward bias then you are always going to use it beyond the cut in voltage okay and that's why uh, in the forward bias condition you say that unless and until your voltage across the diode is Uh, equal to or greater than the cut in voltage you consider it as off it will simply um, it will simplify your analysis quite uh, by large margin and regarding the reverse bias then if you look at this characteristic in front of you then you say that in the reverse bias also you are having certain current okay you are having certain current and but what we do is we say that this current in the reverse bias is not comparable to the current in the forward bias okay this current in the reverse bias is not comparable to the current magnitude of the current in the forward bias okay and in that case you say that any reverse bias across a diode then the diode is considered to be off okay any reverse bias across a diode then the diode is simply considered as off it is not conducting so in that way you turn your whole diode into the form of a switch okay then uh, i will just go to that part where i want to this thing yeah yeah this thing So this is what i'm talking about okay this is called a simplified equivalent circuit of the diode below 0.7 volt the diode is off at 0.7 you say that it is just conducting you don't worry that you don't worry that the current is increasing slowly exponentially it is rising and it takes certain time to reach a particular value you don't worry about that part you say just say that you say that the current is on that's it just like you turn on the bulb in your room whether when the switch is off there is no light in the in the room when the switch is on you get your your bulb is glowing okay so you know then at that time you don't worry how much current is flowing through the bulb so that's what we are saying that 
whenever we are looking at an ideal diode then this is how it will look like then this idealism is further increased and then you say that okay don't even worry about the cut in voltage any voltage above then above the zero value anything above zero anything above zero is is considered as enough voltage so that the current is uh, so that the diode is conducting below that in the negative axis the diode is off very simple you are not even considering the cut in voltage of the diode you just say that if you apply a certain positive voltage to the diode whether it's a 0.1 volt or 0.05 volt plus 0.05 volt to the diode you say that the diode is on and this is called the ideal equivalent circuit because this is actually representing the switch of your room okay because in the previous case in this figure what does it show it shows that unless and until uh, after pressing the switch your voltage is reaching a particular value then only the bulb will glow that is what the interpretation of this figure is but if you look at this figure it is just like when you switch it on you don't worry about what is the voltage you just say that the switch is on and so the bulb is going to glow So this is a much more ideal circuit. This is a, even because it even removes the cut-in voltage of the diode also. So you don't even worry about the cut-in voltage. So this is the most ideal characteristic of a diode. Okay. Any questions here? We look at the resistance of the diode. Okay. So. there are two time kinds of resistance of a diode one is called the static resistance other is called the dynamic resistance static resistance means you take any particular point on your characteristic of the diode in the forward biased direction because reverse bias we already know that the diode is going to be off so we don't worry about the resistance in the reverse bias condition because it is assumed that the resistance is very large it is in mega ohms so it is ideally off so we don't worry about the resistance in the reverse bias condition but the resistance in the forward bias condition is important to us so what we do is we take a particular point on this characteristic from that particular point if i drop a perpendicular on the x axis i get the voltage corresponding to that point similarly if i draw a perpendicular from the that point on the y axis then i get the diode current corresponding to that point then the ratio of this voltage across the diode and the current through the diode is called the static resistance of the diode it is called the static resistance of the diode Okay. Okay. But this concept of resistance, it needs to be looked at uh, in this form that usually your circuit is like this. There is a load resistor R L, and there is a voltage DC supply, suppose, which is varying. and you are measuring the voltage across the diode over here vd this is the current through the diode id and suppose you are having a characteristic like this okay what i'm talking is i'm saying a characteristic is already available to you for this diode this is the characteristic on the y axis is id on the x axis is vd reverse bias it's considered as off we are not interested in the reverse bias at present because 
ideally it is considered to be off and most of the times it is considered as off only so we don't worry about the resistance also so this is forward bias condition what i'm trying to do is that i want to find that particular point because at present what i said i said that take any particular point on this characteristic and drop the perpendicular and drop the perpendicular on the both the x axis as well as the y axis okay so in that way so what i did i what i said take any particular point and drop a perpendicular on the x axis and on the y axis so this will give you vd1 and this will give you id1 so your resistance static resistance is vd1 upon id1 that is how you find the static resistance but my concern is how you select this point and what is the purpose how do you actually get this point okay so suppose i say that you already have the characteristic of this diode okay i'm talking about the characteristic of this diode which is uh, provided by the manufacturer also so every diode you hold in your hand you have a uh, data sheet corresponding to that diode and you have a characteristic also like this and what you do then is you take a particular voltage okay suppose you say supply a particular voltage suppose you say v is 5 volt okay capital v is equal to 5 volt then depending on what is the drop across rl you will have a, a particular value of vd okay so my concern is that i am already having this characteristic but i now want to find what is the resistance of the diode when i apply a voltage v equal to 5 volt to this circuit that is my concern i hope the problem the problem is clear to you yes sir okay so my yes. question is that how to find that point i am doing the reverse thing now you don't want to find the characteristic i am saying the characteristic is already provided by the manufacturer then what do you want you want to find the resistance of the diode at a particular applied voltage v equal to 5 volt and a particular current is flowing at that time okay so then what to do is you you apply a kvl equation in this loop so the kvl equation so apply kvl by when you apply the kvl your equation is v minus vd voltage across the diode minus id into rl equal to 0 this is your equation now if you look at this equation then there is a vd term and there is a id term so vd is here the x axis and id is here or the y axis so we want to find this point and i get a particular point a unique point if i have a particular line if i have a line which will intersect this characteristic a unique line that is going to intersect this characteristic then i get the unique point so to get the unique line i get i want two points because if i have two points then i have unique line okay that will cut the characteristic and therefore a unique operating point corresponding to the applied voltage v equal to 5 volt so to find that point what we do is we say that we take two cases we say that in the case 1 vd is equal to 0 suppose so when i say vd is equal to 0 it means what does it mean it means i am talking about a point on the y axis if vd equal to 0 because vd is on the x axis so if i say vd equal to 0 it means it is a point on the y axis so in that way if vd equal to 0 in this equation then i get from here id is equal to v upon rl okay v upon rl assume that rl is 1 kilo ohm so our applied voltage was 5 volt rl is 1 kilo ohm 
okay one kilo ohm so this will give you the current as 5 milliampere so the point that i get on the y axis is ha having the x coordinate as 0 x coordinate as 0 so suppose that point is over here okay so for this the x coordinate is 0 and the y coordinate is 5 milliamperes i get this point now to get a point on the x axis what i do is i say i go to the case 2 I go to the case two. Okay, I say that I D is equal to zero. So when I say I D equal to zero, I D equal to zero. The drain current, uh, the diode current is zero. It means I am saying I am on the I am on aligning on the x axis. So if I D equal to zero in this equation, then I get V D is equal to V. In our case, V is five volt. So this is five. so i get a point on the x axis like this 5 y coordinate is 0 so i get a point on the x axis i get a point on the x axis like this suppose this is the voltage so it is 5 and 0 so i got two points so what i do next is i draw a line between these two points okay so it is going to draw i go to draw, draw like this now this line is intersecting this characteristic over here and this is the called the operating point operating point of the diode okay because you have the whole characteristic on the uh, in the forward bias condition the whole exponential characteristic is there but what we have done is we have obtained that a unique point corresponding to the unique applied voltage that is v equal to 5 volts that is v equal to 5 volts okay and corresponding to that Uh, and corresponding to this given circuit in which rl is 1 kilo ohm i end up with this line this line is known as this line is called as a load line load line so the load line intersects your characteristic at a particular point and now now your procedure starts that from this point you drop a perpendicular on the x axis now this becomes your vd1 you from this point drop a perpendicular on the y axis this will give you your id1 and this will give you your static resistance of the diode static resistance of the diode okay is it fine here sir in reality yes. sir in phys uh, in physical matlab uh, ye reality mein ek static resistance hota kya hai sir like resistance opposes the current to ye static resistance karta kya hai static resistance bilkul waisa hi hai ki jaise aap koi material mein se current ko flow karaoge theek hai हर एक मटेरियल चाहे वो जितना अच्छा कंडक्टर हो इट विल हैव अ सर्टेन रेजिस्टेंस ओके इट विल हैव अ सर्टेन रेजिस्टेंस चाहे वो आप व्हाट एवर मटेरियल यू टेक एवरी मटेरियल हैज अ रेजिस्टेंस सो व्हेन वी से स्टैटिक रेजिस्टेंस सो इट इज अबाउट द रेजिस्टेंस द बॉडी रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ द डायोड डायोड को जो खुद का जो बॉडी का जो रेजिस्टेंस है इट्स मेड अप अ सर्टेन मटेरियल एंड दैट मटेरियल is providing certain resistance and that is considered as a static resistance of the diode simple si baat hai ki aapne ek voltage apply kiya kisi element mein kisi material ke across aur fir uske across current bhi measure kar rahe ho to resistance ko kaise define karte hain hum log yahi bhi karte hain na hamare paas ki jo ohms law kehta hai that the voltage the current the resistance is like this vd upon id okay. 
V equal to R I is the Ohm's law. Okay, V is directly proportional to I. Okay, that is Ohm's law. So V becomes equal to R I. So at present, हम क्या कर रहे हैं? इस डायोड के क्रॉस एक वोल्टेज अप्लाई कर रहे हैं. एक्सटर्नली एक अप्लाई वोल्टेज अप्लाई किया हमने सर्किट में उस वोल्टेज अप्लाई करने की वजह से उस डायोड के क्रॉस कुछ वोल्टेज ड्रॉप हो रहा है ओके वोल्टेज मिल रहा है हमको उसके क्रॉस और उस उसमें से कुछ करंट भी फ्लो हो रहा है तो दैट्स व्हाट वी अप्लाई कि कितना करंट फ्लो हुआ कितना वोल्टेज है एंड दैट इज योर रेजिस्टेंस एनी अदर क्वेश्चन तो यहाँ आपने एक और टर्म देखा वन इज द ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट एंड अनदर टर्म इज द लोड लाइन ये हमारे अगर आप एक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स के स्टूडेंट हैं तो आपको ये हमेशा चलता ही रहेगा दिस विल ऑलवेज विथ यू कि कोई भी डिवाइस आप ले लें चाहे आप ट्रांजिस्टर उठा लें चाहे मॉसफेट उठा लें हर एक डिवाइस का अपना एक जब भी आप उसको एनालाइज करेंगे तो उसका एक व्यय कैरेक्टरिस्टिक होगा उस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक में से आपको एक यूनिक पॉइंट निकालना है वो यूनिक पॉइंट जो है हमेशा डिपेंड करेगा कि आपने एक्सटर्नली कितना वोल्टेज अप्लाई किया ओके? Okay? तो अगर आप इस इक्वेशन को देखते हैं ओके okay? अगर आप इस इक्वेशन को देख रहे हो ओके दिस इक्वेशन ओके सो इट इज इक्वेशन ऑफ अ लाइन ओके वाई इक्वल टू एम एक्स प्लस सी के फॉर्म में ही है ये ये इक्वेशन कैन यू राइट इट इन इन दैट फॉर्म इन आवर केस इट इज आई डी इज ऑन द वाई एक्सिस वाई इज इक्वल टू एम एक्स एक्स इज बी डी सो इट इज माइनस बी डी ऐसे रहेगा आई डी हाँ माइनस बी डी अपॉन आर एल This is M X plus C, so it is plus V upon R L. Okay. So what is the slope? Slope is one upon R L. Okay. आपको line क्योंकि उल्टे direction में है sir, so it is a slope negative slope minus one by R L. Okay. So what does it mean? इसका मतलब अगर मैं इस वोल्टेज को 10 वोल्ट कर दूं, इफ़ आई मेक दिस वोल्टेज एस 10 वोल्ट्स, व्हाट डू यू एक्सपेक्ट आप क्या एक्सपेक्ट करोगे आपका जो नया लाइन होगा वो कैसा रहेगा मतलब स्लोप इज गोइंग टू बी सेम ओके स्लोप इज आप स्लोप इज गोइंग टू बी सेम सर माय इंटरसेप्ट बढ़ जाएगा y का इंटरसेप्ट बढ़ जाएगा x एक्सिस पे भी आप 10 वोल्ट पर पहुंच जाओगे है ना तो आपका जो लाइन होगा व्हाट आई वांट टू हियर इज दैट द लाइन विल बी पैरेलल ओके द न्यू लाइन द न्यू लाइन विल बी पैरेलल द न्यू लाइन विल बी द न्यू लाइन विल बी पैरेलल ओके यू गेट अ न्यू पॉइंट समवेयर हियर and you get a new point somewhere here suppose it is 10 0 kyunki aapne voltage ko 10 kar diya what you would get is you said you say that if you draw like this it will be like this so jab tak aapka resistance constant hai aapka slope wahi rahega the slope is going to be same okay slope is going to be same but the point of intersection has now changed now you say that क्योंकि हमने वोल्टेज को 10 वोल्ट कर दिया तब हमारा ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट ये है तो अब फिर आप क्या करोगे फिर से आप इस स्टैटिक रेजिस्टेंस को निकालने के लिए यहाँ से पपेंडिकुलर ड्रॉ करोगे इसको बोलोगे वी डी टू फिर यहाँ से एक पपेंडिकुलर ड्रॉ करोगे जो कि यहाँ इंटरसेक्ट करेगा एक्स वाई एक्सिस पे आई बोलोगे एंड देन यू से दैट योर न्यू स्टैटिक रेजिस्टेंस आर टू इज वी डी टू अपॉन आई so just by changing the voltage across the diode kyunki normally aisa nahi hota hai ki hum dc voltage ko apne kisi bhi electronic circuit mein vary karate hain okay so the dc voltage is for biasing aap select karte hain aur usko fix kar dete hain 
Okay, so remember that in a, in any electronic circuit, uh, the DC voltage is not varied unless and until कि आपको कुछ अलग ही समथिंग वेरी मच डिमांडिंग आप किसी भी सर्किट में आप डीसी वोल्टेज को चेंज नहीं करते हो आपने डिजाइन किया एक सर्किट को एक पर्टिकुलर वोल्टेज डीसी वोल्टेज को ऑपरेट करा दिया तो उतने पे ही रखते हो तो अगर आपकी रिक्वायरमेंट ऐसी है कि आपको उस सर्किट में ये जो हम सर्किट हमने देखा अभी उसमें आपको एक्सटर्नल वोल्टेज टेन वोल्ट रखना है तो आप टेन वोल्ट ही रखोगे और जब आप टेन वोल्ट रख रहे हो तो आपका जो पूरा कैरेक्टरिस्टिक है आपके सामने जो अवेलेबल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक है डायोड का ये जो ब्लू कलर लाइन है ये है पूरा कैरेक्टरिस्टिक लेकिन 10 वोल्ट रखने पर आपको वो जो यूनिक करंट जो फ्लो हो रहा है सर्किट में से और वो जो यूनिक वोल्टेज है डायोड के क्रॉस वो फिक्स हो जाएगा फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर एक्सटर्नली अप्लाइड वोल्टेज इस तरीके से आपका जो लाइन है आपका जो ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट है नाउ दिस इज योर न्यू ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट वी कॉल इट एज ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट को हम क्यू से रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं दिस इज द न्यू ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट क्यू टू एंड दिस वॉज योर ओल्ड ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट क्यू वन So operating point is always represented by Q, and Q stands for quiescent. Q U I E S C E N T. Quiescent. Okay. Quiescent. इसी सर्किट में अगर आप वोल्टेज को चेंज ना करें और लोड को चेंज कर डालें, okay? लोड को चेंज कर देंगे, तो आपके सर्किट में क्या होगा? What do you expect the load line to look like? अगर मैं फाइव वोल्ट पर ही रखूं अपने वोल्टेज को एंड व्हाट डू यू एक्सपेक्ट द लोड लाइन टू लुक लाइक क्योंकि एक्स एक्सिस का पॉइंट तो फिक्स रहेगा है ना तो अगर मैं लोड का वैल्यू चेंज करता हूं देन दिस पॉइंट इज सेम बट व्हाट हैपेंस इज दिस एक्सिस में इंक्रीज और डिक्रीज सपोज नाउ द न्यू करंट इज दिस थिंग द रेजिस्टेंस इज हाई अगर रेजिस्टेंस ज्यादा है तो करंट कम मिलेगा तो उस केस में हमारा जो नया लाइन होगा ऐसा होगा जो कि यहां जाके टच करेगा क्योंकि तो ये पॉइंट तो फिक्स है हमने सिर्फ रेजिस्टेंस के वैल्यू चेंज किया तब भी हमारा ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट क्या हो गया चेंज हो गया और योर न्यू ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट इज क्यू थ्री देर आर टू केसेस दैट वी हैव सीन इन वन केस वी है रेजिस्टेंस फिक्स एंड चेंज द वोल्टेज तो आपका जो लाइन है वो पैरल होगा डिवेस लाइन के और ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट शिफ्ट हो जाएगा सेकेंड केस में हमने वोल्टेज को फिक्स रखा रेजिस्टेंस का वैल्यू बढ़ा दिया तो हमारा लाइन का स्लोप चेंज हो गया लाइन का स्लोप चेंज हो गया सो द ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट हैज आल्सो अगेन शिफ्टेड ओके सो यू गेट अ न्यू ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट तो कहने का मतलब है आपका जो सर्किट सामने है ओके okay? सो so ये जो सर्किट है इस सर्किट में अगर आपको अपने पैरामीटर्स पता है वी कितना है आर कितना है और आपके सामने अगर एक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक पता है आपको डायोड जो आपके हाथ में जो है उसका कैरेक्टरिस्टिक आपको पता है तो विदाउट डूइंग एनी के और के आपको सिर्फ करना यह है कि एक लाइन ड्रॉ करना है अपने कैरेक्टरिस्टिक में और वो लाइन जहां भी इंटरसेट करेगा उस पॉइंट से आपको एक्स एक्सिस पे एक पर्पेंडिकुलर ड्रॉ करना है वाई एक्सिस पे पर्पेंडिकुलर ड्रॉ करना है वो सीधा आपको बता देगा दैट वॉट इज द करेंट फ्लोइंग थ्रू द डायोड and what is the voltage across the diode that is the use of this thing okay any questions here